tonight. We got, went to, uh, got a lot of people out. They're sick. And some people may taste everything. I always said, I love summertime, but a lot of times I hate summertime because so many people go in and out and they taste everything. But I was at dinner here today. I, I got me a sermon. How many know that God don't give you a sermon for nothing? Right. I mean, we talk, she talks to you. Got that here today and uh, this evening began to clean the church up things. So he gave me just a little thought. I like those little thoughts, those simple thoughts. The Bible said, keep it simple that you can run with it. And I say, I thank God for that. Now, if you got your Bibles, I turn to read to St. John chapter 3, verse 15. It's a, it's a scripture that, that we all know well. And I left my other specs out in the office there, but I guess I can do it without them a little bit. John chapter 3, verse 15. And I'm going to he gave me a thought. All he takes is believing. Yeah. I tell you the truth, that's faith. That's that now faith. Amen. It, it takes that now faith or believing, amen, to get God to move. The Bible says, though they come to God, he must, he, he must believe that he is. Amen. How many knows God is? Amen. He's everything. I love that word, God is. Yeah. He's, my, he's my rock. He's my salvation. Yeah. He's my deliverer. He's my everything. See, you can take a little simple thought like that and you can preach a sermon with it. Amen. See, God just don't give me a sermon. You see, he gives a message to everybody. Everybody that needs it, amen. And all he takes, amen, is a believing. Praise it. Look what it said. John 3, 15. That whosoever believeth in him. How many believes in God this morning tonight? Amen. I said, how many believes in God tonight? Amen. How many believes in his son Jesus tonight? Amen. It takes believing, amen. The Bible said for that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It takes believing, church. And I thank God we got people here tonight that have been believing. Glory to God. You wouldn't have been here about tonight if you had stopped believing. I thank God tonight he gives us enough, amen, of the, of the faith and that we can believe. Praise God. So many people anymore don't believe, just like that sister testified a while ago, I believe, that, that, that they don't want to hear anything about God. Church, let me tell you something. I want to hear things about God. Amen. I know God, what God done for me. That's all we need to know, church, is what God done for you. We don't need a big list of testimony, amen, to tell, amen, tell people about Jesus. A lot of times people know who we are. Amen. All you have to do, praise God, is tell what God has done for you. Now I love to tell people what God has done for me. And that's all we need to do, church. If you'll get out of witness and everything and, and lift up the Almighty God, just tell them what God has done for you. That's all, these, that's all it takes is believing. That's what it said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him, what did he say there? That whosoever believeth in him shall what? Not perish. Glory to God. But have everlasting life. Yeah. But God sent his son not down here to, amen, to condemn the world, but that through, that through him the, the, the world may be saved. See, yeah. God came to send his son down here that the whole world, amen, could be saved. Now I thank God he's still moving today. I thank God the Holy Spirit is still wooing people today, trying to convince them all it takes is just believing in God and believing what God has done. He sent his son down here, church, that we could have eternal life. And church, sometimes we, we underestimate that so much. It means a whole lot, church, to have your name written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. It means everything because it, it causes us to have favor with God. It causes us to be blessed. It causes us for, for God to put a shield around us. Church, we are so blessed because we believe in God. Uh, just uh, just raise your hands and say, give God just a wave off the church. Because God, amen, deserves that. That's what it says here then. Verse 18 says, he that, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. So truth that there is eternal life in believing what God wants us to do, and that is to believe in Jesus Christ, his precious Son. Now truth I'm saying, God can save you if you just believe. It takes believing for God amen, to be able to save you. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, verse, uh, uh, verse 24. It says, But this man, which is Jesus Christ, because he continued ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Now, truth what, what Paul was saying there, uh, when, when, uh, before Jesus came and became the high priest, uh, and, and for so many years the priest, the high priest, would die out. 
and that they had to pray for their sins and everything else. But now Jesus is an everlasting, amen, priest. He's amen. our priest, glory to God. He's our high priest. Amen. And all we got to do, church, is go to him, and, and he makes intercession for us. He's our, he's our Lord for us. He's our, he's our blessing. He's everything. Now, thank God, just because I believe, amen, God, Jesus can do that. Because that's what God sent Jesus to, to destroy the works of the devil. And church, he's destroyed the works of the devil in my life, and he's destroyed the works of the devil in your life. That's why we need to praise him. Like we sang that song a while ago, oh, how I love Jesus. No church, a lot of people don't understand until they get saved. And church, I'm here to tell you tonight under my voice, if you're not saved, you're missing the most important thing in your life. You're missing blessings. You're missing all kinds of good things because the Bible says God sent all good things down from heaven. Oh, I'm blessed tonight. How about you? I said, I'm blessed tonight. How about you? Oh, I thank God tonight. All it takes, church, is believing. Notice what it says. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost. I love that word uttermost. I mean, you don't go too far in sin that Jesus can't save you. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. I'll trust some the old devil makes you think, glory to God, that, that you went too far, praise God, that God doesn't love you anymore, God doesn't care about you anymore. And I'm here to tell you tonight, church, God loves everybody. Amen. He gave us his son, amen, that, that all we have to do is just believe. And church, the trouble with the world today, they're just not believing. And sometimes, church, I believe that a lot of Christians, uh, they, they're stop believing. But church, let me tell you, I want to never stop believing because I know who God is. And the more I see God, I talk about a spiritual thing here tonight. The more I see God move in my life and the way God moves in your life, how can you deny, amen, all, all uh, awesome God tonight? I, I'm feeling this tonight, church. All you got to do is just believe. If you, if you believe, He can, amen, save you. And we can have eternal life. I'm telling people out there, amen, that needs Jesus. I'm talking to people out there tonight, glory to God, their life is in shambles and a wreck. Their old skin row and everything else. They give up hope on people. They give up hope on the churches. They give up hope on mankind. But let me tell you, when you come to Jesus, your hope will be, amen, in charge, enlarged and everything. Thing because it takes believing in God. If you believe God, Jesus said, believe in me. And I believe in Jesus that God sent him down here that we can be saved. Glory to God. I don't care how bad you are, what you've done. Amen. He said, I could came down here to save the uttermost. He came down to save you. I said, he came down to deliver you. He came down to touch you. He came down to give you eternal life. Oh, all you have to do is just believe it. All you got to do is believe. And church, the devil tries his best to cause people not to believe. But I thank God we got people here tonight and people in my voice tonight, if they'll just believe they can have eternal life, that's just a simple, oh, it's just too simple. It wasn't too simple for Jesus to die. He had to go to Calvary. He had to shed his blood. He had to be crucified. That's not being simple. He paid a price that we could come to him by faith and by his amazing grace that we can all oh, give the Lord a hand. And he can have eternal life. Oh, glory to God. All it takes is believing. Now, now, let me put it inside. The Bible said the devil believes there's a God, but he's going to hell. Yeah. You know why? Because if people believe in God, come to Jesus, have eternal life. They mean God is able to change. That's the main thing. See, the devil doesn't want to change. I'm going to take a people that wants to change. I, I come to God because I wanted to change. The prodigal son came back to God because he wanted to change. I'm going to tell you, I thank God, if you believe tonight, he's able to change you. Amen. Because he puts Jesus Christ in you and the Holy Spirit and you will be changed. Some people say, well, I've done this and I'll do that and I'll do this. I don't care what you've done, how big a sinner you are, God can't change you. Amen. You know why? Because he puts a new spirit in you and he puts a new heart in you. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Bible tells us. The Bible said Paul, that Paul wrote it to the Roman church. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13. That, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. 
See, there's too, people, too many people today are ashamed to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, help us. And too many, too many, so many people, amen, are ashamed to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Oh, trust me, tell you, I've been in situations that, that I had to stand up for God. I had to tell them about Jesus because the, the devil will challenge you. And church, there's time that the devil will challenge you. Amen. You know what? you got to be bold in the Holy Spirit. And say, you know what? I love Jesus. I worked in a place that you could name Jesus Christ. You could testify about Jesus Christ. But you know what? God always gave you a way, amen, that you're going to lift up Jesus. And every time that God gave me a way, glory to God, I lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, you listen to what I'm saying, church. But we got to believe that if I shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe, right here it is, believe in thy heart. And church, I believe in my heart tonight, and I believe you believe in your heart tonight, that God has changed you. Oh, I thank God tonight, church, before the Bible says, therefore, for any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. See, God is able to change you. Do not listen to the devil. Don't listen to the world, because they say, well, you, you, uh, you can't change. I couldn't change. You couldn't change. But when Jesus came in your life, you, you are changed. Because the Bible says that in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. Now listen, you need to underline that. You need to put that out there and read your Bible. Look what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. If in the, oh, I got the wrong one. No, that's right. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man, if any person be in Christ, how many's got Christ here tonight? And when we were saying and everything, church, I believe you had Christ in you. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I love to see people worship God. I love to hear, see people raise their hands up and, and not ashamed to raise their hands up and let the Holy Spirit, praise God, come in and bless you and anoint you. Church, that, that's what's about the church of there today. They're so dead that all they want is just a, just a form of day. If I just come to church for a form, I wouldn't even come. But I want to come to feel something, church. I want a touch of God. I said, if we come to church, we should pray that God, I need a touch from heaven. I need to know that you love me. I know that you do but I need to know, I need to go inside, amen, that you love me and that you care for me and I believe God will because that's the way his spirit works, that he wants to bless his people I mean, been blessed tonight just to be here under the God his anointing therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creature, all things have passed away, behold all things are become new but I'm going back to Romans chapter 10 verse 19 for a minute Amen. He will change you. They say you've got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with his mouth confession made unto salvation. I believe with all my heart that if you really got saved and if you believe that God saved you, you will have something in your heart. Amen. And you will confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You just can't hide. I said you can't. Uh, you can't hide Jesus. The Bible says in one place in the Bible it says that Jesus couldn't be hid. I'm here to tell you, you got Jesus inside you. Amen. God always brings his, 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 his son out in glory. And church, when we begin to lift him up, you will see Jesus. We sing that song a lot of times. I want everybody to see Jesus in me. I tell you, if you've got the love of God, you can't have praise God. Let them see Jesus in you. I said you can't help it. Jesus can't be hid because you believe in your heart. You've got to confess it with your mouth. I love Jesus. I'm standing up for Jesus. Oh, Oh, glory to God. It's time we begin to really believe. That's what's the matter with the world today. They're not believing. They're not believing. And most of the time it's because they don't they haven't really believed in God enough that God can change them. Oh, I thank God God changed me. How about you? I thank God God changed me. Oh, I, I'm not the same man I used to be. I, you're not the same person you used to be. Oh, you had your ups and downs. You have your trials and all these things. And when I, you know what, church, I messed up many times. But you know what? I didn't stop believing. I just looked to Jesus. 
He's, a, he's the author and the finisher of my faith. And the Bible says he said on the right hand side of the Father, he make an intercession for us. And God said, my little children, sometimes the longer how old we are, sometimes we act like little children. Are you listening to what I'm saying? But we can tell my little children, I'd rather not see it. But if you do see it, we have an advocate. I just put underneath the blood of Jesus. I said I put it underneath the blood of Jesus because I've changed. I've got Jesus in my heart. How about you? Have you got Jesus in your heart? You will be changed. And the love of God will come out of you. That's how we can tell it's a witness. That's a witness that we love God. And God loves us because he will show. Can I hear an amen? amen. So with the heart, man, amen changes. But we confess it. You confess it outward and inward. Just by believing. It takes believing, church. I mean really believing. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, I'm trying to wind this down a little bit. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, I love this. Amen. For our conversation, amen. Oh, we will talk about sports and we'll talk about this and we'll talk about that. But Paul says, for our conversation is in heaven. Right. See, we need to start talking heavenly things. We need to be bragging on Jesus. Amen. Bragging on Johnny Mance or somebody else. Oh, they're, they're quick to brag about somebody on sports and everything. Because, see, that's what the world wants. And, and we Christians, we just go along with them. Brag on the, our, our football star or baseball star or whatever. Amen. But when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to Jesus, we'll just kind of bubble a little bit. We should be just as bold as just as those in sports and bragging on their superstars. Can I hear an amen? amen. Glory to God. For our conversations in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior. Our Savior is coming back, church. I said our Savior is coming back, and I believe it. I don't believe he can come back before I even get done preaching tonight. I look for that. But do I, I look at what you need? You need to look. If everybody thought that Jesus was going to come back to the next moment or hour of the night, I mean, people would change. I said people would change. This church couldn't hold the people, amen, that don't come to this church because I believe mean, everybody would bring their loved ones in and just not ask them to go to the altar. They would be compelling them to go. The Bible says compel them to come to the house of the Lord, amen. compel them to, to be saved. Oh, you listen to what I'm saying, church. Oh, glory to God. We look for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, has, who shall change our foul body. Oh, I'm looking for that change. Or right, how about you? Are you looking for that change? Oh, it takes just believing. Now, church, I'm talking about, I know the devil. I know the devil believes there's a God. Even a lot of the principal powers don't believe that they know there's a God. Amen. But you got to know God. you got to know Know him personally. You got to know, praise God. See, I know, Sister Mike, I lived with her for 50 some years. And I know most of us, we can read each other's thoughts. A lot of times we sit there and want a cup of coffee, and I look around and here she comes with me a cup of coffee. I mean, she, we, we, we know each other. We got relationship. I, that's what I'm talking about. If you really love God, you'll have a relationship with Him, and you'll think the way He thinks. You'll talk. Oh, glory to God. Somebody give a Lord name. I said you will face the way God thinks. You'll talk the way God talks. You'll walk the way God walks. Because there is a relationship with God. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And this is a simple little message tonight that called people to change. There are people that need hope tonight. There are people that need to change. They don't know how to do it. They, they go to drugs and alcohol and and, and, and uh, Fortune tellers and everything else, and all they have to do is a simple thing is to believe in Jesus and let Jesus save them and change them. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He shall change our vow body. I'm looking for that change. Amen. Yeah. Not only that, I thank God tonight. Now, most of you probably know. And probably felt the same way I felt when I first got saved and been saved three or four years and even called into ministry sometimes. I would know, know that the devil will, will try to put down fear in you. How many times have you thought that the devil tried to make you that there is, believe that there is no God? Well, the devil has, didn't have sense enough to come to you and say, if thou be the son of God, what's that saying? If God loves you, same thing. 
What are you trying to say, Brother Mayor? I finally come to myself, and I, I was worried about backsliding. Amen. Uh, tomorrow or a year after, or a year or a month, whatever. I was always worried about backsliding or, or, or just giving up on the Lord or, or whatever. How many ever thought that? Amen. You do it because you didn't believe. It, but the devil, that's what the devil puts in your mind. That's what you got to tear down those things. What are you trying to say, Brother Maggard? I learned one time, I kept every day I looked up to Jesus, the author and the finish of my faith. Every day I made sure Jesus was with me. I didn't want to be like his mommy and daddy. Amen. The Bible says his mommy and daddy, or uh, uh, Jesus' uh, father was Joseph. But the Bible said they went three days. Could you imagine going three days, didn't know where your son's at? And finally, after three days, they looked and said, where is our son Jesus at? Where is our son at? I want to make sure Jesus was to me every day. That's why I give up on Jesus. When I get up on when I got Jesus on my mind. I mean, I talk to Jesus. I walk with Jesus. When I'm out there wanting to the garden and everything, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking to Jesus. I'm thanking Jesus. I pray every morning, church, and that's what we need to do. Pray and seek God. And, and, and you know what? He'll give you the faith and He'll give you that believing power. Amen. That He's able to keep you. But I learned one thing. Just take one day at a time. That's why so many people go back on God. It's because the devil comes at them, puts down them, and, 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 and cause fear in their lives and everything. And they end up going back on, off of Jesus. I tell you, I come to Jesus. I want Him to hold my hand. And I want to... Let him keep me. He is able to keep me until he comes back. I'll uh, give the Lord a hand clap, church. There was one, one person not, not saved. I witnessed him for a long time where I worked at. And he was a saxophone player. Play, maybe you can play, you wouldn't believe it. And he got, we, I led him to the Lord. Got saved. Well, his daddy, I got up the hand his dad kept trying to get him out of church and everything. And I, I enticed him, I said, now, I mean, he, he listened to people, well, he, he started going to different churches, you know, different denominations and everything. And I said, now, I'm not going to call his name, I said, well, what you need to do is get into the God-fearing church. I don't care where you go to church at. Most they preach Jesus and everything. But get in there and stay in there. Don't go from church to church to church to church because there's so many different doctrines out there and people believe in everything. Well, you listen to what I'm saying? You know what? He lasted about six months. And the next thing I know, he was out of bars and everything else again. Why? Because church, he, he got so confused about everything. So you've got to get in church, get well in and under a good pastor that preaches the word and teaches the word and talks more about Jesus than to do sports and everything else. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church? But God is able to keep you if you keep your mind upon Him. The Bible tells us if we keep our mind upon Him, He will bless us and He will keep us and He's able to keep us. He's more than able because church, that's who God is. The Bible tells us in the book of Jude, chapter 1, there's only one chapter. Jude, chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling. Don't tell me you can't fall because the Bible says what he does, okay? And it says, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That's God's joy is to keep us. I mean, he's happy for us children. When we come to him, he's happy. And when we mess up, amen, we need to come back to him and, and ask him for forgiveness and get the blood, get the sin under the blood and, and joy will come back to God. Oh, Lord, he's able to keep us, church. Verse 25 says, To the only wise God and our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Just all you got to do is believe. All you got to do, that's believing, church. Believe that He can save you. Believe that He can change you. I don't what you've done. There's people out there walking right down, Brother Kelly, in, in, in condemnation. The things that they have done. And even they come to the Lord and they still allow the devil to bring this condemnation back 
says, God has, I'm here to tell you, when God saves you, I don't care what you have done, He has forgiven you of your sins. If you have repented with sorrow and really mean that you have repented, God takes those sins, I don't care how bad they are, He takes those sins and, and put them into a sea of forgiveness, and Jesus washes the sins away, and He never think about it no more, and He just wonder what you're condemned about, because the Bible says, therefore, any man be in Christ, there is no condemnation. In other words, He's taken every sin away from your life. You have been justified, Amen. sanctified, and glorified. Amen. Woo, Amen. Glory to God. All it takes is believe. Yeah. Just believe. Amen. In closing tonight, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, He tells us to wait. We got to wait on this son. That's the hardest thing for a person to do. How do we, how do we know that? That's the hardest thing for people to do. Right. I have such a migrant sometimes, you know, a lot of times fix breakfast and stuff. I'll put something in the microwave. How do we know what I'm talking about? Put it in there, put, put, push your buttons for 45 seconds or whatever, touch that button, and sit there going. Can you, can you, we got to learn to wait. Could you imagine what, how long Joseph had to wait? He told him pretty much that he had to wait. I think he waited what he's 18 years, 18 years, something like that. Jacob had to wait. Abraham had to wait. God's people has to wait. Wait on the move of God. Wait on the coming of the Lord. He's coming. Just like a farmer when I plant my beans. I tell you, church, when you plant your beans, you got to wait on the on the everything to move the way God wants it to move. And that's why you'll see a little seed popping up. Then vines, then balloons, then green beans. Glory to God. It takes time, but Jesus is coming back. Amen. It says that to wait for his son from heaven. I'm waiting. How about you? That's why I come to church tonight to worship him and glorify him and just be able to charge me up. Charge me up. Get ready for another few more days. Glory to God. The last time long. And to wait for his son from heaven, who be raised from the dead. Even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. I tell you, we got the Christian people today are scared to death. Don't think that they're lost. When Jesus saved you, you're saved. You stay underneath that blood, you're saved. Don't let the devil tell you that you're lost. If you got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and got Him living in you, you are saved, and you, all you need to do is just stop. Just believe that he's coming back. Because you know what, church? I believe this. If we have Jesus in this life, we're going to have Jesus in the next life because that's what he died for. That's what he was resurrected for. That's why he was delivered and he delivered us that one day we just went upon him and he's coming back. That's what the Bible Watch and pray that you be found worthy of the coming of the Son of Man. That's all you got to do. You can't, you, can't, you, you can't use Jesus for a spare time. We got a lot of spare tar Christians. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of charged plates with Christians. One time you want to pull them out when you need something or want something. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's what it is. You got a flat tar, that's the only time you go take the jack jacket up. You know what I'm saying? You got your spare tar and you find out that when you go to your spare tar, it's, 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 it's a flat as a, it's a flat tar is the only tar. Amen? amen? Let's stand tonight, church. All it takes is believing.